Okay, I'm going to talk a, a little bit more about raw conversion in Lightroom. And if you look at this shot, it's probably a lot of people have thrown this away. It's quite blown. There's a bit of movement in there. But the nice thing is with this photo is the head is more or less perfect. It's it's blown. The details are blown. But there's no movement on that. Although we've got movement in the wings on a, on a flight shot. I actually quite like that movement to be in the wings just a, just a little bit. As long as you keep the head and the eyes sharp and you've got no movement in this area, then I think it really adds a little bit to the shot. It gives a little bit of a movement to it. So that's nice and I want to keep that. But the shot itself looks pretty horrible. <laughs> and this is the nice thing about shooting in RAW and using Lightroom to convert the, the RAW. So first thing we're going to look at, first of all I'm just going to crop this image. And if I want to straighten the image, what I'm going to use on this is great when you've got water on there because that's your spirit level. So I'm going to use the water line along there as my level. And I'm going outside of the, the actual crop area there. You can see that the, the mouse changes to like a little double arrow. And if you hold the mouse down you can drag down or up. So I'm just getting one of those straight lines on there along that water edge. And that's telling me that it's it's reasonably straight. I let go and I press the enter key on the keyboard and there's my crop. I'm not finished yet though. That's just got the level I'm now going to crop to the sides. I'm using this. You can see the the lines on there, the horizontal and vertical lines are giving me a little bit of guidance to get it in the right place. So I'm using my thirds. So I've got the bird on this line. So keeping it on that line, I want the extra room to the right of the bird. So a nice composition. I'll press enter again just to, to get the image. Okay, so that's the crop done with. We've got no detail there whatsoever, and this, this can quite often happen, especially with a, a white bird, white flowers. You often get this problem where you've blown the highlights. So, let's see how to work on this. Zooming first. There's the head. As in the previous video that I've done, um, one of my tricks is to use these highlights to bring back the detail, <coughs> especially in... Uh, white birds and whatever if we drag that down you'll see magically the detail coming back into the picture so i tend to drag the highlights down to get that detail back and i'm always looking at the histogram in this area which is like a little map of your exposure i can see that i'm not clipping on the right hand side by looking at these little boxes at the top there these show if I'm actually losing any detail in those areas. So the left hand side is the shadows, the right hand side is the highlights, and it's the highlights I'm really worried about. I don't want to lose any highlights, I don't want anything to clip in that area. But like I say, I'm just under slightly, so I'm going to take the whites up. So I've took the highlights down, and to get the exposure, I'm just dragging the whites up slightly. I'm also looking at the bird and making sure I'm not going to lose any detail if I am. I'll bring the whites back down slightly. But that's nice. I've got a lot of detail there now in the feathers, which is what I'm after. I've also mentioned before that I never ever sharpen in Lightroom. But what I do in Lightroom, and I'm not saying it's wrong to sharpen in Lightroom. Obviously, if you've only got Lightroom and you haven't got Photoshop, the latest version of Photoshop or one of the later versions of Photoshop, then fine, use the sharpening. Uh, but this is this is the method I use. I'll just get the exposure a little bit better there. I want to bring the shadows down a little bit, so I'm going to drag the blacks. And again, I'm looking for the clipping area. I'm just going to look at the picture as a whole, so I'm going to click there. Probably bring the blacks up just slightly. You've also got your shadows there, which will do that so I'm just going to bring that up to about plus five the shadows 
That looks nicer. Okay, so we've got that there. And you can see we've still got the detail there in the bird and the feathers. So what was really quite a, a nasty looking shot is now becoming a lot nicer to look at. Okay, so as I was saying, I don't use any sharpening uh, in Lightroom itself, but what I do use on the on the detail area, so you can see the detail tab there, is I use the noise reduction. And again, we need to be zoomed into 100% to see this. I shot this at 400 ISO using a crop sensor camera, 7D Mark II. And there's a little bit of noise here, just a, a tiny bit of noise in the background. Acceptable, but let's just take that down a bit. So it's always the noise reduction that I'm using in the luminance slider. I drag slightly to the right, just a tiny bit at a time, because it takes time for the image to adjust. So just slide it a little bit, then look at the picture and just wait a few seconds. And I'm happy with that. That's took out most of the noise. I'll probably just a touch more. And that's looking a lot better there. Okay, so that's I'm happy with that. I'm also looking after I've done that, you can see that the highlights have gone up. And they're actually blowing a little bit. If you put the mouse over there, you can see the red on the on the bird there. Probably won't get all that back. So I'm just gonna bring the exposure down a little bit. And the whites. And I'm always looking at the histogram and saying, right, that's let's look at the picture as a whole. And that's looking okay. Okay. So we've got rid of the noise, and that's basically with the majority of nature shots I'm talking about. Uh, that's the majority of what I do in Lightroom. I use Lightroom because it's a nice library, it stores my images for me, keeps them nice and tidy, easy to, to find, easy to work with. And I do the basic raw conversion. But a lot of the work after that I actually do in Photoshop. So one program does not replace the other, they work great together. And this next stage is really why I don't use the sharpening in Lightroom and I use it in Photoshop because the sharpening in Photoshop is so much so much better, so good. So I right click on the image, I go to edit in Adobe Photoshop and that will open Photoshop eventually. There we go. It takes a little while for it to load up. Even more so because I'm using uh, vid video editing software running at the same time, so that makes it even slower. Okay, so we get in there. Just close the welcome screen. And there's the image. Let's change this tool. There we are. Okay, so I'm just going to take these windows off, which you wouldn't usually have. <coughs> if I double click, on the left hand side the magnifying glass that gives me a 100% view if you double click the hand tool that makes it fit the screen so that's usually two nice little quick methods to use to to get the picture to, to look at it okay so the next thing then the sharpening before I sharpen anything I'll duplicate the layers so we go to layer on the menu duplicate layer that's one method I'm not going to click that because I'm going to show you another method also on the right hand side you've got the layers palette which if you click on that it comes up like this and you can right click on the layer and go to duplicate layer that way so it doesn't really matter which method you use this is usually the method I use but either way does the same thing and that comes up I'm just going to click on OK and now you can see I've got a background copy and the originals below. I'm always protecting uh, the image when I bring it into Photoshop by doing that. And then if anything happens, I can always delete this layer and go back to the original and start again if I need to. So the sharpening process. I click on filter. Go to sharpen. 
and this is a beautiful tool, the Smart Sharpen. Now, if I actually click on the bird, it will bring that into the preview area. So I clicked on the head there, that's the area that I want to see. This will come up to, to basically any setting, probably the last one that you've used. Well, the nice thing about this is if we look at that, you may see a little bit of noise there. We reduce the most of noise, but we can still reduce more noise by using the slider if you need to. But also you can sharpen. So usually the radius for the sharpen I use around 0.7 to 0.9. It can go over depending on the image, but I don't usually go much over that. And if I put the mouse and on the preview here and hold the mouse down, that's before, and if I let go of the mouse, you can just see the sharpening there. I may take it a little bit more, so the amount, and I drag to get the setting that I want. So I'm going to take this reasonably high. So I'm on 191%. What I hate to see, you see some bird images, and quite often they use the, the sharpen tool, which is over, over here on the toolbox sharpening tool there and that they drag like crazy over the bird and you get like all these little fine white lines all over the bird not so much on a, a white bird but and it, it just looks so unreal so I tend not to try to over sharpen the image I want it natural I want it to look like it looked when I actually seen the bird and not to be ultra sharp and, and nasty looking in my opinion okay so I'm looking at the beak there, good detail on that, good detail on the feathers. It's mainly the head I'm interested in, the rest of the shot's going to be blurred, there's movement in there, but that's the part of the image that I want. Now also when you're sharpening, I'm going to take this reduced noise down in this case because that will give me more, a little bit more sharpening on the bird itself. And I'm not worried about the background, I've already reduced the noise on that. Well that's there to use should you need it. Okay, so we've got a nice sharp image there. I'm not too worried if the sharpening goes slightly over what I want. And I'll show you why in a moment. So I want to make sure this is nice and sharp. I click on OK. That is now sharpening the image. It takes a little while. There we go. If you look at 100% by double clicking the magnifying glass, I can see that's all down the space bar. Another little trick, or you've got any tool, and you can move the image around to let go of the space bar, you're back to the tool, whichever one you've got set. So that's another little trick. You can move your image around. And you see the background's nice, so there's, there's no noise there. The head's much better. If I double click the, the hand tool on the left now, we can see the whole image. So what looked like a, a pretty dead image now is come to life a little bit and uh, is now looking quite nice, I quite like that. So a bit of blur on your image doesn't always spoil it, especially with flying shots, you know, it, but the important thing is the head, the beak and the, the eyes really, you should have no movement in whatsoever. The movement in the wings looks great, I, lo I love to see an image like that where you can actually see the bird looks like it's moving there. Okay, so really handy tips that. But let's just imagine you had sharpened it. Uh, and what sharpening does, it applies it to the whole image. So it's not just sharpening the bird, it's sharpening everything within the picture, although you've got those settings to you know to, to do things. So if you've got a nice background and it's it's looking okay, you haven't got a lot of noise in there, but then when you've done the sharpening, you're starting to get noise come through and it looks all nasty, horrible. Here's a technique to use to actually avoid all that. So remember we've got two layers. If I look back at the layers, I've got the background copy, which is the image that I applied the sharpening to, and I've got the background. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this is to apply a mask to this layer. And to do that, nice, quick, easy way, if we look down and remember we must be on the top one, that's the one I've applied the sharpening to. 
If I go down to this little button, it looks like a square with a circle. And what that does, it applies a mask. So you can see the mask now on the right hand side there in the middle. I've clicked on that, it's active. Now, to think about masks, think of it like this. If it's white, it's opaque. You're seeing what's on the top layer. If it's black, it's transparent. So basically you can see through it and you can see what's underneath that layer. So at the moment, it's all white, it's all opaque. We can see all the sharpening that we've applied to this layer. And what I'm going to do is to actually revert, uh, reverse this from white to black. And by doing that, I hold down the command key and press I on the keyboard and you will now see that it's black. So what I've now done is I've made that actually transparent. You can see through, so none of the sharpening is now affected to the image. What we've got is the original image at the bottom. And what I can now do, using a paintbrush, so I'll select the paintbrush, I'm going to select a, a soft brush like that. If I bring the mouse on, we see the screen. And I think I've mentioned this before, if, if you look at your keyboard and to the left of the enter key on your keyboard and the letter P on the keyboard, you've got two bracket keys. And by pressing those, the left or the right one, you can actually resize your brush. So I'm just going to get it at this size. I'm going to make sure that the, the two uh, colours there are black and white at the moment. I need white to be on the top and I can use this little button just above the colour picker there to swap them around so I've got white on the top and what happens now I'll zoom into 100% and I'll just go back on the brush there we are you can see that the mask is black that means I'm actually seeing what's underneath this I can't see anything that's applied to that I can't see the sharpening on this because we've made this transparent so Painting with a white brush will bring back the detail. So if I just see, I'm painting the areas, you can see more on the beak actually. I'm painting in where I want that sharpening to be applied to. Also make sure that your brushes, the opacity of the brush is at 100%. So I can now you know, and hold down the space bar and move the bird around. Based on in this area because there's a lot of movement in that. So I'm just applying the sharp into the areas where I want it. I don't need it all over the image, I only need it on the bird. I don't want the background to be sharpened because that's just going to add noise to it. So now I'll just paint the sharpening effect wherever I need it on the image without affecting the rest of it. And you can see on the mask now, you see that little white area there? It's only applied to that area. If I double click the hand tool, you now see all the image and the sharpening basically is just applied to this area where I'll actually want the sharpening. So masks can be really useful for applying anything like this. If you've treated the, the one layer you can mask out the areas where you don't want uh, that to actually take place within the image. Once you've completed that you need to flatten the layers. A quick way again is to right click on the layers palette on one of the layers and go down to flatten image and that then gets rid of all the layers and we're ready to save as a JPEG or whatever you want to save it as when we go to file save as. So there we've rescued uh, an image, I quite like that, not bad really for me, I don't usually. <laughs> Alright, lesson over.